You know what I hate? Lazy, cheap titles. I'm just saying, taking the the and the the before the end in a title doesn't really scream, hey, awesome title. I hate it when they do that, and even when it's vice versa, it's still stupid. Like, adding the to the title doesn't really scream awesome title either. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm talking to you, The Final Destination. Stupid. Just call it what it is, the fourth movie. otherwise known as Fast and Furious 4, or as I like to call it, the CPR of a franchise. Even though Tokyo Drift wasn't as good as the first two movies, Universal was still really impressed with how Justin Lin treated it, so they brought him back for the fourth movie. And then Diesel returned for the fourth film under the condition that he will be the producer, and so they did. Now before the movie even start, Vin Diesel wrote, directed, and produced a prelude that takes place before this fourth movie even starts. But we see Dominic Toretto, he's, he's living in the Dominican Republic, they are low on gas, and they need someone to go get the gas. So this politician hires Dominic Toretto, as well as Han, Letty, and two new characters, Tego and Don Omar, who are respectively singers in real life in those of their real names. Tego Shadaron and Don Omar. And throughout that, Dom and Letty, they rekindle their relationship, and voila, this is where the movie starts. The movie starts out with easily one of the coolest action scenes within the movie that is within the 2000s. Dom, Letty, Leo, Santos, and Han, they hijack a gas truck. Now speaking of Han, you're watching the scene and when we see Han pop up on the screen, the first line he speaks is, I thought we'd be robbing banks by now. I remember the first time I saw it in the theaters, I was like, wait a minute, I thought he died in that other movie, so wait a minute. But then throughout the beginning of this movie, we learn that this movie is a prequel to Tokyo Drift. Now when I first figured that out, I was like, Oh, I see. okay, I see what you're doing here. Now again, the gas truck sequence is one of my favorite action scenes within this series because, because it is the opening scene of this movie and we get to see Dom and Letty for the first time in years because it's the first time we see them since the first movie. And when, when you're watching them, it's like Vin Diesel and Letty, it's like they never left their characters. They just picked them right where they left off. But long story short, they, they jack the gas tank and they're successful and they bring the gas to the town. Dom learns from Han that the feds have raided his garage and so they all have to separate. And then he also retires Han as well, and he tells him, you should go run and do your thing. And then after that, Han says, well, I heard they're doing some crazy shit in Tokyo. You know, and it's that little detail right there. That little part is what connects this movie to Tokyo Drift. I remember when I saw it, it was like, clever, clever. So yeah, Dom and Letty split, and I love their relationship because of the fact that they had to separate. Letty begins to get worried. It's like, we've been doing this for so long, how long are we going to keep doing this? And she begins to get worried. But unfortunately, and spoiler alert, Letty is murdered. <clears throat> and once Don finds out, he is more than pissed off. In fact, he is furious. Pun intended. So then Don goes back to L.A. to find out the truth. And that's another thing I loved about this movie. And that's one of the things I loved about this entry. Is just we get to go around the globe a little bit. Also in this film is the return of Brian O'Connor, played by Paul Walker. And again, this movie also takes place sometime after Too Fast, Too Furious. Apparently, Brian, I guess he has left Roman and Dej in Miami and moved back to L.A. And he got reinstated within the FBI. And he goes undercover to find out what happened to Letty. And long story short, Brian finds some leads, and these leads lead him to the first time he meets Dom within years. And I love this scene because, again, it's the first time we see them together on screen in a while. And even the little dialogue they have together, like, like Dom says, you here to arrest me, O'Connor? And then Brian's like, the lady was my friend. And then Dom's like, you were nobody's friend. Just that, it's just little details like that is what gave you the chills. But I love those little pieces of dialogue because you can tell that to this day, Dom still holds somewhat of a grudge against Brian for what he did. But later they find out who the guy is that killed Letty, and so they both go on as street racers, but, not, but at first, they're not working together. But I, but I love the chemistry they both have in this movie, because they're both, they both want the same thing, but they're going about it different ways, and they both have different views on it. It's like Dom is aware of what Brian's doing and going undercover, but Dom, he is straight up out for revenge. And I just love the way they illustrate that. We also get a cool race where they don't know, know where they're going in the race, but they have a GPS. And I love the way it was shot and choreographed. And the cars in this movie are pretty cool too. Like, we also get some old cars back. Like, Don brings back his muscle car. Because the tagline in the movie is, old model, new parts. As for the other characters, Jordana Brewster returns as me in this movie. And in this movie, I like what they did with her. Because because you can tell in this movie, she is still mad at Brian for what he did. There's a, there's a scene in the movie where we see them at a restaurant. They're talking to each, they're talking to each other for the first time in years. 
And you can tell how angry she is at, at him for that. Then she asks his brain, are you the good guy trying to be the bad guy? Or maybe you're the bad guy trying to be the good guy? And even Brian, he is conflicted with what he did. But in the end, the movie does come to a conclusion where she forgives him for what he did, though. We also get Giselle in the movie, and she's played by our future Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. Or Gadot, however you pronounce her last name. And she, in this movie, she's kind of dumb bluff interest, but that doesn't go anywhere, and especially in Fast Five, though. But I'll touch more on that in the next review, though. This movie, uh, this movie also introduces us to Leo and Santos, the two dudes that helped Dom in the gas truck heist. And again, they're played by Spanish, reggae, whatever, I don't know what they are, but they're played by the singers Don Omar and Tego Jadaron. And they also did the soundtrack for this movie, and they also had a song they did for the Tokyo Drift soundtrack too, but I love this, I especially love the soundtrack for this movie as well. And Pitbull and Pharrell, they provided music for this film as well. Like three of my favorite songs on the soundtrack, Virtual Diva, Yusuf She Grip, and Blanco. But Leo and Santo, they help bring comedy relief to this movie, and it definitely culminates in Fast Five, along with Tyrese and Ludacris. So the villains in this movie are Braga and Phoenix. Phoenix is the one who essentially killed Letty, so Dom is after him the most. But Braga, he's the one who's running everything. And he's the one that put the call out to kill Letty. Now, Phoenix, he's played by Lass Alonso, and up until a couple of months after I saw the movie, I didn't even know, know it was him. Because around that time, Lass Alonso, he was coming into his own as an actor, and he was getting to become more popular. So when I found out, I was like, you know, you're more of a good actor than people give you credit for. But, but Laz Alonso, he kills him in this movie, so props to him for that. The climax in this movie, Brian and Dom, they go after Braga in Mexico, and so they capture him so they can take him back to the States to get arrested. Dom still wants to kill Phoenix, and so he does. And the way he kills him is awesome. Phoenix is out, and then Dom is out in his car, Phoenix is in front of a car, and then Dom just shh, comes out in his car, and then he T-bones Phoenix against the other car. Like, I'm telling you, that scene, I'm sorry, it's, it's messed up as it sounds, but that scene to me is really awesome, and especially when you're watching that scene on surround sound, I'm telling you, have the bass checked up when you watch that scene. Really, my only few drivers about this movie is the CGI, especially when they're going through the tunnels. Like, some of the visual effects in this movie is very questionable, but it doesn't detract from the overall movie because the overall movie makes up for it. After Brian and Dom, they come to an understanding, Dom finally turns himself in. And so Dom goes to court, the judge it recognizes that he helped bring down Braga, but one right doesn't make up for a lifetime's worth of wrongs, and so they send him to jail for 25 to life. Now after that you think, well, Dom is finally captured, and you would think that's truly going to be the ending of the series, but no, what happens is, Dom, Leo Santos, along with even Mia, they come in their cars and they try to break Dom out of the bus to jail. But they don't even show it yet. Pretty much a wide shot of, of the bus in the cars and then the, and then the camera pans into a car passing by and then boom, in credits. That's the way to hook them. See you in one year. Now for my final thoughts on this movie, again, the CGI in this movie is very questionable, but again, it doesn't detract from the overall movie. But this is, to me, this is definitely the most action-packed, before Fast 5 and 6, this was the most action-packed between the gas tanks heist, the races, and all the Mexico stuff. This was definitely a well-balanced movie between all the story and the action stuff. So props to Justin Lin for that. And I feel like this was definitely the most emotionally driven film because this, this movie takes place five or six years after the first movie and to a certain degree after the second movie because we finally get to see Dom and Brian and what happened to them after the first two movies and how they dealt with the aftermath of the first movie. And we get to see old characters, some new, and we get to see their characters grow and their story arcs increase. Now before Fast 5 and 6, this is my favorite sequel of the series, but, it's, but not as great in my opinion as the first film, but it's up there. Like, to me, this was the true sequel to the first film. I'm gonna give Fast and Furious, or Fast and Furious 4 as I call it, an A+, for full price. That's it for the day. You like what you see? Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to my other channel. The links are in the description below. And be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, and Instagram. And be sure to check out my website. Peace.